Okay, welcome. So um, today's yoga class, we're going to be using our senses, which is particularly useful if you're feeling anxious or even panicky. And it's a lovely place to do some sensory work. So today we're going to use something that's nice to smell um, and safe to smell. Um, like a burning candle wouldn't quite work for this, um, but something like lotions. Um, and if you're watching this on um, video, uh, just pause and you can have a look around for your piece of fruit. Just something that you like the smell of. And we're going to uh, use that. So just have it near your mat. Um, as usual, um, just grab a couple of pillows or a blanket or a towel, um, just for a little extra comfort and padding. And with every single yoga practice, it's always about your body. So if I suggest something that doesn't feel right for you today, just skip it. That is the best form of yoga. Um, you can um, check in with yourself. And, oh, do I like this? Do I not? Um, and if anything, even if there's a doubt, just, you know, come out of it, make it a bit easier on yourself, take a lovely breath and go on to the next thing. So think of today as a bit like a, a buffet. Um, so we're going to start laying on your back, on your floor, on the floor. Um, so just getting nice and comfy. So you might take a cushion or two. Place them underneath your thighs if that feels good. A bent knee feels better. You can lie down with your knees bent, your feet wider than your hips, and your knees resting onto one another. So we have a couple of options for finding a comfortable spot to lay down. Now we're just going to start to tune in to how you're feeling on this particular afternoon, this particular moment in time. And one of the ways to reduce adrenaline, reduce a, a stress response, is to think about our senses. So, Keeping your eyes closed, just noticing five things that you can feel. So they might be what's underneath you, it might be your clothes, it might be one body part touching another, it could be your hair, it could be the temperature on your skin. Taking this moment just to tune into five things you can feel. And then softly opening your eyes. So you're probably looking up towards your ceiling. And starting to look at your ceiling, are there any differences, any textures, any bumps that differentiate one part from another? And if you have a incredibly smooth ceiling, or if the ceiling is so high that you can't really see, then you can move your head gently to one side or the other and just have a look the four different textures. Four different colors. Becoming aware of how the colors or the contrast between the textures are. When you found four, reclosing your eyes. And 
and we'll start to tune in to what we can hear. So it could be sounds outside the room that you're in, sounds inside, it could be the sound of my voice. becoming aware of three different sounds. If it's really quiet where you are, you can also make a sound. So you might deepen your inhale so much so that it makes that sort of sound of the ocean. So three things that you can hear. And then tuning into the sense of today, which is smell. So you might be able to smell whatever item you were holding earlier that you had picked for today. It might be in the air or it might be just out of reach off the mat and you might not be able to smell it right now. We're just going to see if we can notice two things that we can smell. And it doesn't matter if you can't buy them. Maybe deepening your inhale as your sense of smell goes looking. And then lengthen your exhale. Finally, Coming to one thing that you can taste. You might not be able to identify it unless you very specifically had eaten or drunk, drunk something recently. You're still sort of analyzing. What is that taste? So with our sense work, it actually doesn't matter if we have a dulled or lost sense. So through chemo, through treatment, through COVID, many of us might have lost or dulled one or two of our senses. This practice that we're doing work by us tuning into what's there. And tuning into the looking. So even if what's there is the blank spot, that's okay. So taking a lovely big breath here. And then slowly let it out of your mouth. And very gently just starting to put a little bit of movement in your body. You might scrunch up your hands and open them. You might bend your knees, take your knees softly from side to side. Just sorry, to straighten up your arms, maybe over your head. If that sounds nice. We're taking a yawn or a sigh. And just seeing if now if you feel a little bit more settled. So as we settle into ourselves, we're able to feel what we need a little bit more, which is great for yoga. So rolling over onto your side and really taking your time to come up to a comfortable seat. So your comfortable seat might be sitting on one or two pillows. I'm going to sit on one today. If it isn't comfortable sitting on the floor, you can also sit on the edge of a sofa or a chair. Um, so just know you can build your seat up as high as you like. You can always adapt. And then just closing your eyes once you've found your seat. 
seeing how your spine is feeling here. And imagining a little lift in and up with the belly button here. As if your abdomen wanted to support your lower back and holding you. But gently enough that you can still breathe down and into the stomach. Softly opening your eyes, you're going to reach for whatever item you like the smell of. And then just taking that item, putting it underneath your nose, and we're going to take three lovely breaths, just really enjoying and noticing whatever our item is. There's no rush. Notice if it smells different from the first sniff to the last one. And then as you gently take the item away, notice if the smell sort of lingers in the air or if it disappears. Bringing your hands together, feeling one palm against the other, feeling all your fingertips against one another. And even with this, if you're having some neuropathy, if all the senses you, you've experienced before aren't there at the moment, just that process of checking in to see what is is what tunes us in and reduces our stress response. And then taking your thumbs, bending them slightly, and as your forehead goes forward, you can take your thumbs and rest them, the knuckle of your thumb in between um, your eyebrows or right on that um, inner corner of your eyebrow. For those of us who carry stress in our eyebrows, this can feel really nice. And just letting your head become heavy, enough that you feel a little bit of a stretch along the back of your neck. Breathing here as if you were still breathing that lovely smell. So taking a deep breath, just like you did before. And letting that air out. And then softly lifting your head up. We're going to take your hands, still feeling them against one another. You're going to lift your hands up towards the ceiling. So you gently lift your chin. And then as you bring your hands down, your chin comes down and you softly round through your back. I'm going to turn to the side so you can see that. So moving really slowly with your breath, inhaling. Lifting the hand, just gently gazing up. And then exhaling, hands come down and a soft rounding through the back. And seeing what you can feel here. What part of you do you notice the most? Coming into the last one, you can have your eyes following your hands, or if you prefer, you can close your eyes if that feels nice. We're ending in that rounded position, thumbs into the chest, and once again, just letting your head become heavy so that you can feel a stretch along the back of the neck. And then softly lifting your heart here. I'm going to take your hands out in front of you. And uh, as if we're doing like a stop. And we're going to gently take them out to the sides. And then just explore. Maybe one side really likes to do this and the other one doesn't. That's okay. You can have the two arms doing something slightly different. 
So we're just bringing them forward and then bringing them around and back. You see, feel your shoulder blades. So notice if it sort of has like a, a wrapping sensation as you come forward and wrapping around this way. And then as you come back, the shoulder blades are wanting to meet on your back. Yeah, last one of these. Feeling that wrap around and then softly coming back. And gently letting our arms come down. Do a nice little shoulder roll here. That can be nice. Just doing a movement, you can get your elbows involved and then letting your shoulders Soften down. So we can do even a little active relaxation of the shoulders here. So consciously asking those shoulders to soften. So we're going to keep nice soft shoulders as we take our left hand and we're going to bring it across to our right knee. Belly button stays facing forward, the center of your chest, as you find that lift in your spine is turning towards that knee. Lovely. So you can stay here, if that's feeling good. So finding your breath, thinking about breathing as if you were smelling that delicious scent that you found earlier. And if you like, I'm just going to turn to the side to show you, you can draw a circle with your elbow. Only if it feels nice. So you've got some options. Quite enjoy a shoulder circle. I notice big difference between one side and the other. So. Just tuning in to the circle that feels right for you. And then as you inhale, gently turn back through center. And I'm just gonna turn so I can see some more faces. So coming back to center, finding that lovely length in your spine, finding that sense of your, your lower abdomen wanting to help your lower back. Belly button faces forward. So thinking about the center of the chest moving as your right hand now comes over to the opposite knee. Finding that length again. Left hand comes to the center of your chest. And you might stay here. Or if you want to find the circle on this side, you can. Inhaling as you come up, exhaling as you come back. So it's particularly delicious. And there's no rush. Just exploring this position, allowing yourself to really feel the sensations. Maybe breathing as if you were smelling that scent that was so nice. And then Gently on an inhale, coming back to center. Taking your hands to the floor in front of you, you're just going to walk your hands forward. It doesn't have to be that far. You can be up on your fingertips if you prefer and stay out here. If you're someone that likes or is comfortable to go forward, more and bring your head down to the floor you can. So there's different things on different days. And then softly walk your hands back towards you and change the cross of your legs. Always feels weird when it comes to the other side. Notice if you need any additional support on this side. And then repeating in your own time that coming forward. And it might feel really different. It 
I feel like I've got an alien hip on this side. Once again, finding that breath. That breath, like you're sniffing the air. Letting the air out of your mouth. And then softly and slowly walking your hands back up towards you. And we're gently going to come into um, a kneeling position. So this um, next one is designed for sensation. What I will say is this is my personal, um, I get too much sensation from this next position. So I personally adjust it. So your toes are tucked under. And you might stay here up like this, or you might bring your hips back towards your heels. I've got friends of mine that could hang out here for 20 minutes and they're totally fine. Um, that's not me. So for me, I would take two pillows and put them underneath my knees. And then I can feel it, but it doesn't go above that threshold. So know that you can come out of it, you can lift up. You might take your hands forward, that's also another option. So we're getting a stretch into the feet, which is actually really, really good for the feet. We've got 8,000 nerve endings in our feet. They like a stretch. So, We've got fascia in the bottom of our feet, thick layers of fascia. And they take a little bit longer to stretch. So we're just going to be here for another 20 seconds, unless you're thinking like, oh, hell no, and then come, come on out. But if you're staying in it, just taking a lovely deep breath in. Noticing what you feel and then softly walking your hands forward. And then this is where often there's a real tingling in the toes coming out of this. So noticing that sensation and just gently tapping your toes against the floor, feeling that blood flow come back in, and that blood flow is what goes in to the fascia, that's what goes into the nerve endings in our feet. And that's what's so deliciously good for them. So now we're in a table position. Our hands are under our shoulders, our knees are under our hips, and our toes are gently pressing into the floor. If you're finding it challenging with your fingers spread wide um, on your wrist, you can come into um, fists here. So um, know that you have some options. We're going to move through one slow cat cow. So as you inhale, letting your stomach come down, your chest comes slightly forward as your chin lifts. As you exhale, you press down through your hands, down through your feet, tucking your tailbone, chin comes to chest. And then gently coming to a flat back. I'm going to show you another option. So you can um, decide whether you want to keep the cat cow or if you want to bring your elbows down onto the floor. We're going to, as you inhale, lower your stomach, lift your chin, and then we're going to come to a point where you can't go forward anymore. And then straightening your arms which is when you round through your back and your hips come back and then you come back down. It's like a circular cat-cow. So, and if you've done a circle and that feels nice, but your hands weren't quite in the right spot, you can always stop and adjust. And then gently coming up and around and back, or staying with the cat cows that we did first. Inhale, 
Inhaling as your stomach comes down and your chin lifts. Exhaling as you round through the back. And still finding your toes against the floor. So letting your toes help you with that balance. So we're thinking about parts of the body that we don't necessarily always think about throughout the day. And integrating them into the experience. And coming into the last one of whichever version you're doing and coming back to a flat back. So again, your hands can be spread or you can be in um, a fist position and gently taking your right foot back, gotta kick some pillows, <laughs> right foot back, um, toes are on the floor and you're gently pressing back into your heel. This is to get a stretch up into the car. Taking a lovely long, Smelling breath in and a lovely long breath out. And then gently place that knee down onto the floor, coming to the other side. Toes are down, you're just softly pressing into the heel to get a nice stretch along the back of your calf. And then softly bring that knee down. And coming now into lifting the right knee up. So your knee is bent and your heel is pointing up towards the ceiling. Now, my first instinct is to lift my hip up. <laughs> so if that's happened with you, that's okay. Just start to bring that hip so it's in line with the other one. And this is where that sense of the lower abdomen supporting the lower back really comes into play. So as your belly button lifts in and up, it supports your lower back and maybe that heel goes a little bit higher. Maybe not, just check it out, see how it is today. And then gently come on down. Taking a moment, you can do a little wiggle in between. And then coming to the other side. So on the other side, lifting the left up. Once it's up, just checking where the hips are and seeing if they can be in line with one another. The knee is bent, the heel is pointing up towards the ceiling. And then seeing if your toes can get involved on your lower foot, can they help with that balance? Can the lower abdomen help your lower back? Can the heel come a little higher? So we're just exploring. And then softly bringing that knee down. Bring your toes together, your knees a little bit wide, and we're coming into a position called child's pose. So if this isn't the most comfortable position, you can take one of your cushions or two of them and put it underneath you. If there's a space between your hips and your heels, you can also put a cushion in there. So toes together, knees wide. Your arms can be up, they can be bent. So in this position, we're looking for a little bit of rest. And it's a place to come back to what we feel. So see if you can notice the mat underneath you. See if you can notice, or if you're on a carpet or on a towel, just noticing the texture of the floor underneath you. Noticing its ridges. And maybe you're noticing with your hands. Maybe you're noticing it with your toes. And then notice if noticing makes you, um, does any changes. So if there's a bigger breath that brews or a sigh or a yawn, 
And then softly coming up, and we're going to come forward into a sphinx position. So in sphinx, we're going to take the elbows either underneath or slightly in front of the shoulders. If you have this kind of sensation, then the elbows too far back. If you feel like the shoulders are going forward, then just bring your elbow slightly forward of your shoulder. And once you do that, there's a sense that you can press down into the elbows and you get that lovely opening in the center of the chest. Gently press down into the toes. Lovely. And then lifting your right knee out to the side, if you like. So your knee comes out and your toes are pointing away from your body. Keeping that gentle pressing down into your toes, that pressing down into your fingertips, into your elbows. And finding your breath. And your breath moves in a different way in this position. Noticing what is moving as you breathe in and breathe out. And then very gently start to come back down and you can make a little pillow for your head with your hands and then slowly slide your leg back down. You can do a little wiggle from side to side and you can reach around for your item that smells really good. Now maybe you put it in front of you, maybe you lift up for a moment. And take a nice deep breath in. Noticing if it smells just the same or if it smells different. And then oh, relaxing, letting your whole body get lovely and heavy onto the floor. And then we're softly going to come to the other side. So gently lifting your elbows so that they're either underneath or slightly in front of your shoulders. So that when you press down, you feel your chest open. You can either stay in this position or this time take your left knee out to the side with your toes pointed away from the body. And then just seeing if it feels really different on this side, if it doesn't feel like something that you fancy on this side, you can change your mind, straighten your leg back down can come out of this position at any time if you prefer the pillow, then that's, that's yoga right there. So that tuning in, feeling what your body would like is where we hope to retain this yoga. Taking the last long inhale here. And then a lovely long exhale out. And softly and slowly start to come back down onto the floor, straightening down your leg. You want to do a soft shimmy from side to side. Let your head rest onto your arms or your forearms or your knuckles in a way that feels lovely and supported. And your whole body just feels like it can ah, put into the floor. From here, gently bring your hands to the sides of your chest in order to lift up through a table position. And from a table, we're gonna move into a forward fold. So depending on how you're feeling, you know, if you're feeling a little bit dizzy today, sometimes you might want to use a piece of furniture to come up first. Um, so just know that you can adapt what feels good for you. And just making your way into a forward fold. 
open again. Like if this isn't feeling that lovely, and you want to do it against the wall so that you feel like you've got some security, you can always do that. And from the forward fold, keep your knees a bit more bent. And if it feels like you're here and there's any shaking or anything doesn't feel um, quite right, just allow your arms to become like brackets. So your head and your neck can really relax down towards the ground here. Keeping the knees bent. And then softly and slowly rolling up one vertebrae at a time to come all the way up to standing. Once you come up, gently rolling your shoulders up and back so that your palms face forward. I'm gonna do a little adjust here so I don't look like I don't have a head. <laughs> so with the palms forward, Gonna inhale, bringing the arms up towards the ceiling. Hands come together, we feel them come together. Bend at the knees and then softly and slowly folding forward. If that doesn't feel good, then take your hands to your thighs and pad them down your legs to come back into that forward fold. Inhaling, walk your hands back up your legs, rolling up through the back. Till you come up standing, shoulders roll back, palms come forward. Bring your hands together at your heart center. We're gonna do the same one that we did at the beginning. So inhaling, lifting, relaxing the shoulders here. So notice if they're crowding, letting them come down. And then exhale, rounding just through the upper back. Inhaling, lifting. And exhaling, coming down. And we're gonna do the last one of these, inhaling, lifting, feeling the heat of your hands. Notice if there's any more or less heat than earlier. Coming back down. And inhale, swooping the arms wide. Bring your hands together as if they were drawn together by a magnet. Softly coming back down, clasping, bring your hands away. If it feels nice, bring your hands up towards the ceiling, relax the shoulders. Turn the palms towards you, round through your upper back. Inhale, take your hands behind you and clasp, lift your chin, lift your chest. Shoulder blades really wrapping together onto your back. Exhale, hands come back, heart center. So, taking a moment here, moved around the shoulders. And then just having a look down if you've got any pillows or the thing that you were smelling on the mat, just making sure you've got some, got some space. You're going to turn your right toes out on an angle, so like 45 degree angle. And with the other foot, you're going to take a nice big step. Again, if you've got like a piece of furniture and you want to hold on while you take that step, that's a really great option. So as you take that nice big step, have a look at your feet. So your front toes are pointing forward towards the top of your mat, and your back toes are on an angle. And your knee wants to go towards, your front knee wants to go towards your little toes. So just notice that that knee is coming in and just kindly encourage it to come out. Then bring your hands up in front of you, that second thing that we did today, like the stop, and then gently bring your arms out. Feel your shoulder blades wrap around your back and then extend your hands out. Lovely, have a look over your front hand and maybe bend a little bit more into that front knee, maybe not. Inhale, softly straightening that leg without locking it. Exhaling, coming back in. And thinking about that smell, can you smell it? Is it in the room? Is it in the air? Is it still 
in your nose? Is there any trace of it? And then exhale out. Inhale. What can we notice? Exhaling, bending the knee. Lovely. Softly coming up, relaxing the arms down, turning the toes to face the front, and then heel toeing your feet towards each other. And then once you get to the top, you can do a little side to side with the hips if that feels nice. And we're going to come to the other side. So at the other side, step this way, and um, we're going to take um, the left toes slightly on an angle, take a nice big step with the right foot. And once you're there, you can always adjust. So you can always make that foot go a little bit further forward or come back. Have a look at your toes. Have a look at that front knee and see that it's pointing towards your toes. And then taking your hands together as if you were saying stop. And then start to bring your arms out with that sensation of the shoulder rib blades wrapping around. Yeah, and then straightening your arms. Lovely. Feeling that extension through your fingertips. Feeling the floor underneath your feet. Seeing what you can smell. And notice how when you do that, you take an extra deep breath. Take your back hand to the back of your thigh. Actually, you know what? A bit early for that. <laughs> we will do that in a moment. We're going to straighten the front leg and then gently ease into rebending it. So just doing that a couple of times, following your breath. Last one. Maybe with that last one, the bend goes a little deeper, maybe not. And gently coming up, the arms gently relax, toes come forward, and then heel toe your feet towards each other. And then if you want, you can do a little side to side, that feels nice. So turning to face the top of your mat, and inhale, sweep the arms wide. Palms knee overhead, exhale, hands come down, heart center. Inhale, swooping wide, thinking about your feet. And their solidity on the ground, bend your knees and maybe fold forward or take your hands and pad down through the body, releasing the head, releasing the neck. Inhale, either walk up that same way or swoop the arms out to the side, press down through the feet and gently rising all the way up. Exhale, hands come down, heart center. So we're gonna come back into our warrior pose. So right toes back out on an angle, left toes forward in that nice big step. Finding that alignment, finding that front knee coming out, and finding the back edge of your back foot. Sometimes it takes a moment to say, where's the edge of my foot? And that's exactly what we want to be doing with yoga. Feeling it out. The belly button is wanting to support the lower back here. So notice if it's coming down, think about it softly supporting the lower back. Take the hands together in front and then slowly start to draw them wide until the shoulder blades start to meet on your back and extend the hands out. This time we're going to turn the front palm up towards the ceiling, back palm to your back thigh, keep the knee bent and then reversing your warrior here. So finding nice length through the front, unless it doesn't feel right. And then by all means, come out of this position, come down, take child's pose. So we're gonna do that two more times, inhale, coming up. 
exhale. For the last one, thinking about that lovely scent. And exhaling. And again, this is just another option if it feels good. So it's taking your front forearm to your front thigh. With your back hand, you can bring it forward, around, and then up towards the ceiling. So with this particular one, we're looking for a nice side. So as if there was one long line from that outer edge of your back foot <laughs> all the way up and over. So thinking about that back edge and noticing if you're collapsing into that front. So lovely space between the ear and the shoulder. Lovely. Inhale, come back up, warrior two. And then straighten that front leg. Toes come forward and gently your toes, your feet. And once they come together, if you want to do a little side to side, see how you felt. Decide if you want to do the other side. Decide if you want to take a smaller stance. Decide if you want to do it by a wall. All these decisions are very calming to the nervous system. The more we listen to the body, the more we tune in, the more our nervous system responds by changing the chemical makeup. So this time, left toes out, really big step, right foot forward, finding your warrior on the side, so finding that lower abdomen wanting to support the lower back, taking the hands out in front, and then thinking about the moving around and jerking your around. Yeah, so you've got that lovely opening on the front of the chest and then extend the fingers. From here, if it feels nice, take the back onto the back of your thigh, turn your front palm over and gently lift it up. It can go up towards the ceiling, it can go back. So just options. And then gently floating back into your warrior two. Moving, inhaling as you come back. And exhaling as you come forward, maybe bending a little deeper into that front knee if it feels nice. And last one, think about that lovely smell. And exhale. Super, take your front forearm to your thigh and you can bring your other hand down towards the floor lifting up and coming into your side angle so i'm having lots of wardrobe lifting of t-shirt today <laughs> so, but these are the things when we have time in yoga to adjust make ourselves comfortable find where our ear is and our shoulder Find where that bend is. Find where the outer edge of that back foot is. Take a lovely deep breath. See if we can smell that gorgeous scent in the air. And let it out of your mouth. Softly and slowly rising back up through warrior two and straightening your leg. Turn your toes forward and then gently heel toe coming in. Lovely. Facing the top of your mat. Inhale, swoop the arms wide. Hands come together and either walk your hands down your body or keep them in that prayer position to come down into forward fold. When you're in your forward fold, bend your knees deeply, shake your head softly from side to side, releasing any tension in the neck. Feel your toes, feel your heels, the outer edge of your feet, the inner edge as you do that. And then softly walk forward, back down into table. From table, we're going to lift the hips back up and into down dog if that feels nice. So returning into 
and lifted hip. And then you can lift your heels nice and high and then gently bring them down towards the ground. You can pedal through the legs here. So lifting one heel and then the other. So bending one knee and then the other. You can put a little movement through the shoulders, through. I've heard it called dancing in Devil Dog. I'm not sure it's quite dancing, but <laughs> I guess it's the freedom to make any little movements that feel nice here. And then take a lovely deep breath in. And then exhale it out of your mouth. Softly bring your knees down to the ground. And then we're going to come along and onto our backs. So taking your time, just make sure that you have your nice smelling item nearby and that you have um, a couple of pillows or your blanket nearby. And I'm going to just adjust this so you can see down. So coming down onto the mat, we're going to take our lovely smelling item and just have another little smell of it. And then bring your feet as wide as your mat, knees bent, and then let both knees go over towards the right hand side. The arms can be out, up, or in cactus arms, which is bent at the elbows. Inhale, softly bring your knees up towards the ceiling, and then exhale, bring your knees over to the other side. Inhaling, softly coming up. Exhaling, softly coming over there. Take a full breath here. And when you need to inhale again, softly coming up. Gently bring your knees to the other side. If you want, you can always put a cushion underneath your knees if that feels more comfortable. Inhale, gently coming up. And exhale, bring your knees over to the other side. Gently bring your knees back up through center. Let your knees rest onto one another. I'm feeling a lower back along the ground. Maybe you take your hands and place them on your abdomen. So our senses are something that are always with even if we might not have access to all of them all at once. There's someone, there's things that we take with us every day. And so they're there to access in times that are anxious, in times that are tough. And knowing that you have that ability to tune in to calm, to reassure your body. So the reason it's so reassuring is because it's the opposite of what we do when we're stressed. When we're stressed, adrenaline is released that is designed to desensitize us, which is why sometimes we'll have been running or something and then the next day notice a bruise, but we didn't feel it as we were running. The adrenaline was high, so we keep going. And it's one of the reasons why 
because we can't feel what we need, that we tend to not only are desensitized, but we behave differently because of it. They call them stress behaviors. We drink too much, we eat too much, we drink too little water. So that adrenaline is designed to desensitize us so that we keep going. When we allow ourselves to become sensitive to touch, to sound, to sight, to smell, we really allow ourselves to tune in notice all the little differences. My body goes, well, you wouldn't do that if you were unsafe. Well, we better adjust this adrenaline. We better rearrange. And so it's a way that you can communicate with your body. Softly letting your knees come up towards the ceiling. You can take your right foot, bend your right knee, take your right ankle and place it on your left thigh. Your right knee coming out to the side. And if this feels nice, then stay here. This can be quite a lovely, relaxing position, softening through the front of the hips. Here. Or if you prefer, you can take your hands and bring it around the back of your left thigh, maybe moving a little from side to side. So perhaps as we move through our day, we move through the world, we can start to look at things that make us happy or make our senses happy. What things do we like the touch of? What things do we like the look of, the sound of? Can we take a moment to really absorb when we enjoy something. So one of the things, if anxiety, if panic is rolling, if it needs a little bit more, to actually make a box and putting your favorite sensory things in the box. Gently letting your foot come down onto the ground if your knee was lifted and then gently swapping sides. So taking that foot down, do that for a few and then crossing the other foot over. See what you like on this side if you want your foot to stay on the floor or if you want to bring it in with you. So in your sensory box, you might have a lotion that you love that might be nice smelling and you like the feel of it. So it might be two, two senses in one. There might be piece of jewelry that you like the sound of. It could be a color, stone. Everyone's really unique when it comes to what they like. The idea is that when things sort of get overwhelming, that you go to your box and you literally open it up and you look and touch and feel and smell 
the things that you like. And how I heard it described was, it's like when sober you takes care of drunk you. You know, like when you're sober and you know that you're going out at night out and so you've already put the water beside your bed, you've already put the painkillers there or had a snack ready for when you get home, too drunk to think of what you need to make. So making a sensory box can be making it for before you need it and having it be full of things that delight you and then softly release that foot back down to the ground if it was lifted bring both knees in towards you and rock softly from side to side and then take a nice deep breath in. And then exhale, let your legs and your arms sink down onto the ground. So for this final position, you might lay along the floor or you might take a cushion and put it behind your legs or you might take a pillow and put it behind your head. However you choose to settle into your shavasana, you just want it to be something that's comfortable. So if there's any little movement, any little extra movement your body wants to make, you've got a chance to have an intuitive movement. And when we listen to what we need, we often feel that sigh, that relaxation, that heaviness, just start to come more naturally. So as I've been looking at things that we can do for ourselves and our senses and why this works, it really struck me how this is really an ancient practice. So if we think of centers that were designed for focus or reflection, we think of various traditions, they had beads, often scented beads, such as mala beads, rosary beads, worry beads, for people to touch, to bring them back into that focus. And if we think of incense being used all around the world, in all different eras, there's this idea of smell bringing you into the present, calming you down, creating a new space. And often buildings were made with that in mind. Stained glass making pretty light paintings, things to occupy your eyes. Sounds. Echoes. A lot of religious structures made to accentuate the sound of the human voice, the sound of the instruments. I mean, this is an age old practice of tuning in. Letting our whole body get fully here.
then you can decide if you want to stay in this space. If you're watching this on video, you can pause and just relax here. Or you can wiggle your fingers, wiggle your toes. Might stretch your arms up overhead if that feels nice. Might point your toes, make your stretch, everyone. We stretch here. <laughs> we might laugh it out. However, that air wants to come out. And then gently bend your knees. And then softly rolling to one side. There's no rush. And softly coming up to a comfortable seat. And if you like, we can end that same position that we started with the hands together, the bend of the knuckles so that your forehead, the inner creases of your eyebrows just gently rest into that space. So as we come out of the practice, we might feel a little different. Our perspective, our focus might feel a little different. And then bringing your knuckles down to your heart. I hope you have a lovely rest of the day. Um, and if you do make a sensory box, that's nice. Um, I'd be very happy to hear about it. They're kind of fun to do. And it's um, quite fun to like just even look around your life going, what do I like to put into a box for um, when you're having a sober day? So, yes, yeah, so talk next.